today about something connected to education. It's actually The Voice, the phenomenon of the TV series The Voice, and how that may or may not, actually it does, connect to state testing and testing in general and the self-esteem of our kids. And we've just been thinking about this, and it's come up a number of times as we sat on the couch and watched The Voice. Yes, we watched The Voice. Uh, so we thought we'd share our random and sorted and thought through thoughts with you and um, start the conversation. So, um, yeah. One thing we were talking about while watching The Voice was we started to notice how the coaches talk to their contestants and also how the coaches speak when they're on camera talking about their contestants. And because I was talking about, like, Blake it does such a good job. He's won so many times. Like, there must yeah. be stuff that he does behind the scenes that just makes his contestants do better. And so we were just becoming more aware of that during the season. And he really does do a good job of blessing his... Um, contestants, Pharrell also does a good job too. Yeah, which explains why he might have won on the first time he was on the With show. Sawyer. So, yeah, so he's 50% winning. <laughs> and um, there's lots of people on the show that have been coaches that have never won. And we've just been wondering why. Like, they're all really good. What is it about Blake? I mean, he's such a buffoon sometimes. <laughs> um, but he's obviously doing something right because mm -hmm. he is. He is training and choosing and all kinds of other things that are making his contestants win. So let's dive in. What is it? Um, we, we started thinking about the idea. She said the word blessing and in education and in polling and all kinds of other things, they use the word priming. And so we started paying attention to what Blake says to his contestants when he knows the camera's rolling mm -hmm. because later people are going to vote. And so there, there's two factors there's, to this. There's Blake talking to his people and um, making them feel a certain way. He primes them. He, and he then, builds their self-confidence and their self-esteem. Yeah, and, and so they perform better mm -hmm. because of that. And, and coaches do it too, but, I mean, he is a coach, but, like, athletic coaches do it as well. Um, and, and so then he also primes the audience because the audience later then votes and so he puts ideas into our head through words and through phrases, whether he's doing it on purpose or not. He might just be an accidental genius, but <laughs> he's doing this stuff. He, he says things like, what was the, the example? Um, oh, I forgot her name. The Gwen Stefani. She likes to say, I can't believe that you're that good. And Blake would say something like what? He would say, I already knew that you had this in you. I'm just glad that the people are getting to see it now. Yeah, and so there's drastic but very subtle differences in those. I can't believe that you can do this primes us to think in the back of our heads, this is higher than you could have ever gone. You probably can't ever do this again. It was an accident. Where Blake and also Adam does this and Pharrell does it as well. They say, I can't believe you've been lower than this. This is what I've been expecting and more. We're just starting to see what you're capable of. And the audience goes, yeah, that's just what I thought too. You're capable of so much more. Whereas I can't believe that you're this good says I was expecting less and you happen to give me more. And it, it, there's, it, they're subtle, but they're very real. And so these, these are not direct quotes though. These yes. Sorry if we quoted you slightly <laughs> like <it's> different. Making... <laughs> We're talking about blessing, and it sounds like you just called. <laughs> you just said Gwen's doing a bad job, and that <laughs> that that Blake is a buffoon. <laughs> that he's a buffoon, but he's, he's, he's I say he seems like he's a buffoon. <laughs> he does. He comes. Yeah, I think he comes across like that on purpose sometimes. I don't know. But how did? So we were talking about then. How does this connect to education? And I remember reading a book by Malcolm Gladwell. We looked it up just to make sure we got the right one. It's called Blink. And we listened to it, I think. Wasn't that the one we listened to driving up to Lake Tahoe one year? Yeah. Yeah. And it was fascinating, all the different examples in there. He's one of my favorite nonfiction authors. And in this book, Blink, the, uh, 
the the prime uh, priming uh, uh, the main point in it is that we can make decisions really good decisions with much less information than we think that's the general theme and one example that he uses in there is in the concept of state testing do you remember remember this example uh, yeah he was just talking about how before testing he or not he, but there were teachers that practiced the, it's a psychological term, I guess, priming. Yeah. And they would just say, like, I am smart, I can make good choices, and they, they would have the kids, instead of, like, cramming based on the standards, it was just, I know this stuff, I'll do a good job. I remember that I used to do, <laughs> I actually used to do this with my kids without even realizing it before state testing just because I taught second graders and the whole idea of the big fat test was kind of scary to them and so I just tried to calm them down by just saying you guys you don't need even you don't even need to worry because you know what you know and you're gonna just try your best and I would have them kind of say things like that but just the concept of um, priming and encouraging them and giving them a blessing before they took the test to help them realize you're smart you can do this yeah and I remember some examples in there too were um, the difference between they would they would take two identical sets of students like same uh, demographics same social status same socioeconomic status all of that and they would take them in to take the same test and they would narrow it down to one different variable one category of student like one sample set they would ask them their race on the bubbles beforehand and the other sample set they wouldn't and this would prime the students to start thinking about all of the baggage connected with what society thinks about their race. Mm -hmm. And certain, certain ethnicities would score much higher or much lower based on whether they bubbled like significantly higher, like two thirds higher. Uh, I've, I'm, uh, maybe I'm getting the data a little bit <laughs> off, but it was a lot, like very significant, unbelievable for teachers, just based on they bubbled about their ethnicity. And that they used that as an example of priming. And they, they talked about some other classrooms that um, before the test, they would, instead of putting up review strategies or posters with the, I don't know, the writing, writing order on it, uh, just any of that stuff, they would put up adjectives describing an excellent student mm -hmm. all over the room so that for three weeks before the test the students are just thinking about what an excellent student is and then they would with very significant like significant okay. data data step into that and fulfill into that and they talked about that as another example of priming and so then that went back to our conversation about mm -hmm. the voice and how Adam and Blake especially is priming his singers all the time to only think of themselves as even more excellent than they already are and they live into it season after season. Mm -hmm. I mean there's nothing flukish about what Blake is doing. I think the other coaches could do it as well and then for teaching it like how could we do that as teachers? Starting day one we could call our students to way higher we're, regardless of where we're teaching them, if we're inner city, out in the country, in the suburbs, wherever we're at, whatever our levels are, ELL, honors, I mean, I've taught all those levels, um, we can tell them that they're excellent, that the, whatever identities they had in the past are different now, and they can live into these new identities, and they will. It's amazing what priming can do. And so we just wanted to share that brainstorm that we've been having as we watch television. <laughs> We're weird like that, right? Created for learning education from the voice or whatever, <laughs> whatever that is. Uh, but well, we welcome your comments down in the comment section. Share with us. Let's talk back. And we'd love to uh, hear what else, what other ideas, or maybe even where you've seen this in your own classroom. Like how have you been doing this idea of priming, whether accidentally or purposefully, in your own classroom? And how has that played itself out? I also think... Because we sound like we're bashing Gwen. She's actually, this set of coaches is my favorite. Favorite! She does, She's so great. She does a good job of, like, just caring for, and you can tell that she just really yeah. loves her teammates. Absolutely. So. And everybody else's. With how many, did you see the, the reel of how much she <laughs> cried? <laughs> She's very caring. Um, I, we're just talking strategy. And, and, like, the subliminals behind the scenes that are really, I think, very effective. So uh, share your comments with us, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.